Imagine you're standing at a pivotal moment in your life, a decision that could change everything. You feel the weight of making the right choice, but doubt and fear cloud your mind. It's a scenario every seeker of truth and believer in personal growth can relate to. How do we find the clarity to make the best decision? Nobody knows really whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. People who think they're always right, they're terrible people. When you are reasonably balanced, make a decision, throw your life into it, something wonderful will happen. Sadhguru begins by challenging the very notion of right and wrong decisions. He tells us, nobody knows really whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. This statement might sound unsettling, but it's a reality we all face. People who are convinced that they are always right often become the most rigid and intolerant among us. Instead, Sadhguru invites us to embrace a different approach. He shares an anecdote about students copying answers during exams, not to promote dishonesty, but to illustrate how we often seek external validation for our choices. The fear of making a wrong decision creates internal conflict, leading to anxiety and indecision. Sadhguru's advice, joyfully do something wrong, it's okay. This isn't a call to recklessness, but an encouragement to act with courage and acceptance of imperfection. The essence of making decisions, according to Sadhguru, lies in the impact they have on our well-being and that of those around us. When you do something, is this bringing well-being to me and everybody around me? That's all your concern is. This shift from a binary right-wrong mindset to a focus on well-being is transformative. It frees us from the paralyzing fear of making mistakes and allows us to act with compassion and inclusivity. Sadhguru warns against the dangers of believing we are always right, as this mindset breeds tyranny and intolerance. Instead, he urges us to awaken the humanity within you. By doing so, we expand our boundaries and include others in our decisions, fostering a sense of unity and collective well-being. He explains that human nature is naturally inclusive and expansive, unlike animal nature, which is exclusive and boundary setting. Human nature is naturally inclusive. Animal nature is exclusive. It wants to fix boundaries. By embracing our inherent inclusivity, we can navigate life's decisions with a sense of purpose and connection. Sadhguru advises making decisions when we are balanced, clear, and happy, not frustrated or confused. When you are reasonably balanced and clear and happy, not frustrated about something, make a decision, throw your life into it, something wonderful will happen. This approach emphasizes involvement and commitment over correctness. Life, he asserts, is about total involvement, not about being right all the time. He reminds us that the perception of right and wrong is subjective and ever-changing. Till the last day of your life, you cannot really decide what is right and wrong because there will always be another set of people who says, this is wrong. This perspective encourages us to focus on inclusive well-being rather than rigid judgments. Sadhguru's wisdom offers a liberating perspective on decision-making. By shifting our focus from the fear of being wrong to the pursuit of well-being for all, we can navigate life's choices with greater confidence and humanity. The path to making the right decision lies not in certainty, but in our commitment to inclusivity and collective well-being. So, the next time you're at a crossroads, remember Sadhguru's words. When you are reasonably balanced, make a decision, throw your life into it, and something wonderful will happen. Uh, my question to you is, uh, whenever we make decisions, there is always a right or a wrong decision. Whether the decision taken is right or wrong is only eventually re realized. How would I know uh, I took the right decision and how will I know if I'm uh, taking the right decision or wrong decision while making it? But why are you copying a question? Copying it, uh, that's what I had in mind, so I wrote it down. Okay. No, no, I've… Uh, I was never so interested in the examinations, I never bothered. But I saw when I was in college, lot of people inside their sleeve, here, there, everywhere they've written, and uh, all kinds of chits and things, but they were all copying answers. <laughs> Question you copy because… No, no, I'm not trying to make a comment on you because this is everywhere. Because 
you are creating such a level of conflict within yourself for every simple thing, that you think you could always be doing something wrong, something wrong, something wrong. Well, joyfully do something wrong, it's okay. Hello? Nobody know, knows really whether they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Do they know for hundred percent? No. So don't bother yourself too much about is this right, is this wrong. It is just that when you do something, is this bringing well-being to me and everybody around me? That's all your concern is. People who think they're always right, they're terrible people. You produce tyrants out of this. I am always right, I made all the right decisions in my life. This is a tyrant, this is not a human being. It becomes a very ugly human being who does everything right. You don't have to do right things, just be a little more human. Just make sure when you do something, it's good for you and good for everybody around you, that's all. It is right, it is wrong, who is to decide? If it's bringing well-being to everybody, it is the right thing, isn't it? Nobody can decide what is right and what is wrong because for a thousand years they've debated the same things and nobody has come to a conclusion as to what is right and wrong. And people who believe they're doing the right things, they did the most horrendous things to each other, always. So instead of looking at right and wrong, which is a consequence of a morality that you… in which you believe, why don't you awaken the humanity within you? Why don't you become a living humanity? Humanity means just this, already we spoke about this. Animal nature means fixing boundaries. Human nature means expanding or including everybody into your boundaries because this is a natural longing. Wherever you are, you want to be something more, something more. What is this? This is because your intelligence has come to a place where it doesn't like boundaries. It wants to expand. This is human nature. Human nature is naturally inclusive. Animal nature is exclusive, it wants to fix boundaries. So instead of being in boundaries of right and wrong, even if somebody is wrong, let's include them and do the best we can. Because the moment you think I'm doing all the right things, those… everybody looks wrong in your life. See, please sincerely address this and see, most people are in this condition. Except themselves, everybody is wrong somewhere. If everybody is wrong and only you're right, it's a sign of madness, it is not a sign of being right. Sadhguru opens by addressing a universal dilemma, the anxiety over making the right decision. He reassures us that nobody truly knows if their decisions are right or wrong until they see the outcomes. He emphasizes that individuals who are always convinced of their correctness often become intolerant and rigid. Sadhguru encourages us to make decisions when we are balanced and clear-headed, promising that committing fully to our choices will lead to wonderful outcomes, even if they aren't always right by conventional standards. Drawing from a relatable scenario, Sadhguru recalls seeing students copying answers during exams. This, he explains, is a metaphor for how we often handle decisions in life. Copying or seeking to replicate what others do indicates a lack of understanding and preparation. It highlights the inner conflict and fear of failure many of us experience. By addressing this, Sadhguru suggests we focus on gaining clarity and understanding rather than blindly following others. Sadhguru shifts the focus from the binary of right and wrong to the broader perspective of well-being. He advises that instead of obsessing over whether a decision is right or wrong, we should consider if our actions contribute to our well-being and that of those around us. He warns that thinking we are always right can lead to negative consequences, creating an environment of tyranny rather than understanding. The core of Sadhguru's message is to prioritize humanity and compassion over the need to always be right. He emphasizes that our decisions should bring well-being to ourselves and those around us. By being humane and considerate, we can transcend the simplistic dichotomy of right and wrong and create a more inclusive and positive impact on our community. Sadhguru calls for a shift from moral judgments of right and wrong to awakening our inherent humanity. He urges us to embrace our natural inclination to include others within our boundaries, expanding our sense of self 
to encompass those around us. This, he argues, is the true essence of human nature, to be inclusive and expansive, rather than exclusive and constrained. Expanding on the idea of inclusivity, Sadhguru contrasts human nature with animal nature. While animals set boundaries and remain exclusive, humans naturally seek to include and expand. He advises us to embrace this inclusive nature and avoid fixating on the rigid concepts of right and wrong. By doing so, we avoid the delusional state of believing we are always correct and instead foster a more harmonious existence. Sadhguru emphasizes the importance of making decisions when we are clear and positive. He acknowledges that while our decisions might not always be right, they can still lead to significant and positive outcomes. The success of our decisions depends on our competence and the context of the times we live in. By approaching decisions with clarity and positivity, we maximize our potential for positive impact. In his concluding remarks, Sadhguru reminds us that life is about total involvement rather than correctness. He encourages us to engage fully in whatever we do, prioritizing the well-being of everyone involved. By being inclusive in our actions and fully committed, we can create a meaningful and fulfilling life, transcending the simplistic pursuit of being right. So do not waste your time in right decisions, wrong decisions. When you are reasonably balanced and clear and happy, not frustrated about something, make a decision, throw your life into it, something wonderful will happen. You may not do the right thing, but you may do a great thing, you may do a wonderful thing, that's good enough. How far will I go? What will happen? Well, that depends on various things, your own intelligence, your competence and the times in which we exist. You should not discount the times in which we exist. At different times in history, different things take off. We may be in sync with it, what we are may be appreciated today, or what we are may be appreciated tomorrow, or what we are may be appreciated after we are gone. But whatever we did in our life, we did with total involvement, because life is in its involvement, life is not in its correctness. Your involvement must be unbridled. Whatever you do, see how everybody's well-being is included in this. If you are an inclusive process and you're involved, it is fine. Are you right or wrong, right or wrong, till the last day of your life, you cannot really decide what is right and wrong, because there'll always be another set of people who say this is wrong, isn't it? Life is full of choices, and we often find ourselves at crossroads, unsure of which path to take. The pressure to make the right decision can be overwhelming, leaving us paralyzed by the fear of making mistakes. But what if the key to a fulfilling life isn't about choosing right over wrong, but about something deeper and more meaningful? Think back to your school days. Remember the anxiety during exams, the fear of failing, and the desperate attempts to get the answers right. This fear of making mistakes often follows us into adulthood, creating inner conflict and doubt. Sadhguru teaches us that the true essence of decision-making lies not in the binary of right and wrong, but in the impact our choices have on our well-being and the well-being of those around us. Instead of obsessing over whether our decisions are right or wrong, we should focus on bringing well-being to ourselves and everyone affected by our actions. Decisions made from a place of clarity and balance, rather than fear and anxiety, tend to bring positive outcomes. Sadhguru emphasizes that people who believe they are always right often become rigid and intolerant. Instead, we should strive to be more humane, ensuring our decisions are inclusive and compassionate. Human nature is naturally expansive and inclusive, while animal nature is exclusive and boundary-setting. By embracing our inherent tendency to include others and expand our sense of self, we can move beyond the rigid concepts of right and wrong. Sadhguru advises us to make decisions with clarity and positivity. Even if our choices aren't always right, they can still lead to significant and positive outcomes if made with a clear and positive mindset. In his teachings, Sadhguru reminds us that life is about total involvement rather than correctness. He encourages us to engage fully in whatever we do 
prioritizing the well-being of everyone involved. By being inclusive in our actions and fully committed, we can create a meaningful and fulfilling life, transcending the simplistic pursuit of being right. The success of our decisions depends not only on our competence, but also on the context of the times we live in. By approaching decisions with clarity, balance, and a focus on collective well-being, we can navigate life's choices with confidence and humanity, ensuring our actions lead to positive and fulfilling outcomes. See, all arrangements that we make in our lives are supposed to enhance our life, isn't it? Why do you get educated? Because you think it'll enhance your life. Why somebody gets married? Because they think it'll enhance their life. Why people have children? Because they think it'll enhance their life. Why they're doing business? Because they think it'll enhance their life. But look at people's faces and see, before they got educated, before they got married, before they had children, how they were and how they have become today, does it look like they're enhanced? Hello? They become like this. So obviously, they made so many arrangements that they cannot handle. They made more arrangements than they can actually handle, isn't it so? They did not make arrangements consciously, what is needed for me? Their problem is, she is every day going shopping. So I also want to go shop shopping, I don't know what to shop, but I'll shop something and come, because she is also shopping my neighbor. <laughs> so because they are in this condition, Though there is no container service at the end of life, most homes have turned into warehouses. Most people have things in their homes that they have not used for a year or two and still there. They can't give it away, but it is cluttering their life in such a way they have to trip all over the place to walk around in their homes. Because they did not build this home, they did not buy these things, they did not form these relationships as a way of enhancing their life they are using everything to entangle their life. You make whatever the kind of arrangements you make, but the kind of arrangements you can handle, isn't it? You don't try to make arrangements like somebody else and you don't know how to handle. Why do you make an arrangement that you don't need? If you make an arrangement that you don't need, these arrangements will become entangling. So if you… what kind of arrangement is best for you? You just make that. A spider whips a web for other things to be caught. But if you are that kind of a spider, you build a web in which you are caught, you are a stupid spider, isn't it? And most human beings are in that condition. You made an arrangement in such a way, if something significant happens here, you are going this way, if something really significant happened this way, you can go this way. Your arrangements will not trap you. This is an intelligent life. You would have given your best effort, but to no avail, you ended up on the wrong side. Everything seems right, except the results. Does this keep repeating? What can you do to be on the right side? Listen to Satguru as he explains why things go out of control and how you can turn the tide once and for all. If you just happen to be in the wrong type of ambience, negative things can hit you. To always end up in the right place in your life is a certain talent, don't think it's luck. In the spiritual traditions… In his teachings, Sadhguru reminds us that life is about total involvement rather than correctness. He encourages us to engage fully in whatever we do prioritizing the well-being of everyone involved. By being inclusive in our actions and fully committed, we can create a meaningful and fulfilling life, transcending the simplistic pursuit of being right. The success of our decisions depends not only on our competence, but also on the context of the times we live in. By approaching decisions with clarity, balance, and a focus on collective well-being, we can navigate life's choices with confidence and humanity, ensuring our actions lead to positive and fulfilling outcomes. Who, irrespective of where they are, 
they will still stay on course. All other human beings need support. If they are not in the right company, there's very little chance of them doing the right things. Unfortunately, that's a reality. It is not necessarily a misfortune because what this means is they are open to influence. It is the responsibility of the social fabric to create the right atmosphere for every individual to grow towards what is beautiful for the individual and for everybody else around him. But not always or rarely, societies conduct this responsibility. In the right sense, because Societies are not led. Societies, societies are all allowed to go through a metamorphosis depending upon what is the influence in that direction it grows. So be… to be under the right kind of influence, an influence which nurtures you towards your ultimate truth, an influence which gives, gives you the necessary courage and strength to walk the path of integrity.